When I first saw the device, I immediately saw the application within our own ICU. And I said, there is no reason why St. Joseph's Healthcare shouldn't be at the forefront of this type of technology so that people can then learn from our experience and benefit from our expertise at it, at using this device. After we purchased the Palma Vista, we initially started by placing it on as many patients as possible just to get an understanding of how we would apply the device at the bedside, what type of information was it giving us. Then we started applying it to the more complicated patients and that's when the real learning began. When patients are presenting with uh, complications, whether they're severe or mild, and it's becoming increasingly difficult to understand what's going on within the lungs, those are the patients I would recommend using it on. Generally, the information that we have at the bedside that would prompt us to use the Palma Vista would be low compliance, high FiO2 needs, high minute ventilation, or just strange things that are happening when we make adjustments to the ventilator that may not be explaining the full picture. The patient with ARDS is typically our hardest to oxygenate uh, patient and a typical, difficult patient to manage with a ventilator. In terms of ARDS, um, selecting the appropriate PEAT for oxygenation uh, becomes an issue, and so that's where we need some guidance from a variety of technologies, including EIT. I think EIT has a great role in transitioning patients actually off the ventilator, so weaning a patient who's gone through a significant uh, ARDS and ventilatory challenge phase of their illness uh, to determining ideal peak levels and the titration of that peak uh, gives you a real-time sense of what's happening to regional distribution of gases, uh, which can help. Um, so we're not prematurely lowering PEEPs uh, and then having patients rebound to requiring greater oxygen and PEEP levels and return to higher ventilator settings later. The regional information that we gather from the device at the bedside has been key in how we've used it. And typically, things that we couldn't assess when we would do something like a recruitment maneuver strategy using stepwise increases in PEEP and pressure control, we couldn't tell when the patient was recruiting or where within the lung or if they were recruiting at all. And just based at bedside monitoring, we didn't know the effectiveness of our recruitment strategy because typically patients will desaturate, but that may not indicate that they're not recruiting. So this gives us that visual information, that feedback, that regional information to say, yes, the area we're worried about is actually opening up. Uh, so where it's come in handy for a case example is a patient where, as an educational moment, a fellow decided uh, that proning may be in the patient's best benefit for uh, optimizing oxygenation. I think that EIT fits in nicely with some of the other technologies we employ in our ICU. Uh, we use esophageal balloon uh, pressure monitoring, for example, to help guide our uh, PEEP settings, especially in our bariatric and our ARDS populations. EIT gives us a real-time perspective on how those changes guided by the esophageal balloon, uh, as well as EIT, can work uh, together to fine-tune uh, the optimum PEEP setting. It has added the regional information that was lacking by using esophageal pressures, which is just a global information. It has allowed us to be more aggressive with recruitment strategies, and again, we've used it not as a replacement to, but we've used compliance to determine optimal PEEP as well. As a registered nurse, uh, it's important to practice patient-focused care, and that encompasses the individuality of the patient. So I strive to indulge the uniqueness of each patient given that they have a standard diagnosis but it's incredibly important to consider their comorbidities and other factors that influence their health care. The Palma Vista 500 is a fantastic device that's allowed for me to better care for my patients and potentially improve their all over health outcome. As a result, by being able to actually visualize mechanical ventilation and seeing what needs to be changed in terms of the vent settings. So when we turn our patients or provide bedside care, we can tell if a patient needs more uh, ventilation or less ventilation as a result of the Palma Vista. Really, there's, there's not much in terms of difficulty with application of the Palma Vista. We have been proud of our individualized approach to mechanical ventilation here at St. Joe's, and this is just one aspect that just broadens that, and it really has opened up our eyes to further individualizing the care of the patient.